Hello my dear student and welcome to today's class. The topic for today is crop production and management as you can see on your screens also. Okay. So children in this chapter I am going to tell you about types of crops, different agricultural practices and about nitrogen cycle. Okay. So let's start the chapter. Okay. Children as you all know we all all the living beings, be it, uh, human beings, be it animals, be it plants, they, have, they depend on food for their survival. Okay, food is very important to carry out what all activities we are supposed to do. We get energy from the food and then only we are able to do our uh, work. Okay, children. So, let's start the chapter. We all depend on food to survive. It is an essential component for our survival. Fine. We, uh, where do we get the food from? We get the food either from the plants or from the animals. Okay. So, food comes from plants and animals. With increase in the human population, the demand of food is also increasing. Therefore, food should be produced on a large scale. You all know the rate of population is increasing day by day. And with the uh, uh, increase in population, the demand for food is also increasing. So, children, I am going to tell you what is agriculture actually. So, first I am going to read out the definition for you. The process of growing plants and rearing animals for food, clothing, shelter and many other things that we use in our daily life is called agriculture. So, what is agriculture? When we are growing plants and animals so that we can get different things from them on a large scale. It is known as agriculture. Fine. Now, what are crops? Crops are plants which are grown in large numbers to get useful products like food and clothing are called crops. When the plants, they are grown on large scale, lot of plants they are growing together, okay, to meet the demand so that we can uh, get proper food from them, clothing, so many things the plants are giving us, that is known as crop, okay, fine children. Now, there are different types of crop depending on how they are grown, which time of the year they are grown, okay. So, they are divided into two parts, Rabi and Khari, okay. So, crops can, types of crops, crops can be divided into group based on the growing season, okay. Here, it is Rabi crop. These crops are grown in winter season, right now winter season is going on. So, these crops are growing in winter season, that is in the month of October to January and when are they harvested? Harvested means when are they cut? They are harvested in or cut in the month of March and April and the examples are pea and wheat, okay. But if I talk about Kharif crop, okay, as you can see on your screens also, okay, Kharif crop. These crops are planted in the monsoon season. They are grown in the month of June and are harvested in October. Example are bajra, maize, groundnut, cotton and rice. Okay. Now children, before the farmer grows the plant, grows the crop in his field, he has to uh, do a lot of practices. Okay. Different agriculture practices are there which the farmer has to do before the crop is grown in his field. Okay. So the farmer... Adopt different steps to grow, grow different types of crops. These steps are called agricultural practices. These activities vary from crop to crop and the common activities the farmer follows are. They have to be in sequence. Okay, you cannot do uh, whenever you are writing it down. It has to be in proper sequence also. First is soil preparation. The soil is first of all prepared. Okay, then selection and sowing of seeds. What are the type of seeds you are going to uh, 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 plant okay the quality of the seed should be very good so that the plant which is grown is also of good quality then applying manure and fertilizers so that the fertility of the soil can be increased then irrigation irrigation means how you are going to plant okay because a lot of crops they are grown now they have to be given water also okay without water they won't be able to grow properly so uh, it uh, in irrigation, the way of plant uh, giving water to the plants. Then weeding, 
then harvesting thrashing and winnowing and last the storage of food grains okay children now i'll tell you in detail soil preparation okay how the soil is prepared before the farmer uh, starts uh, putting the seeds in the soil he has to prepare the soil for what does he do in case the soil is hard okay what does he do he tills it or he plugs plugs it okay the soil is plugged or loosened by using plugs which are drawn by bullocks or tractors how does the plugging help us now loosening the soil particles mixing the soil with humus retaining moisture in the soil aeration of soil particles and equal distribution of manure in the field these are the different advantages of plugging okay now leveling first the farmer plugs now the soil has to be properly leveled okay it has to be properly leveled everything has to be smooth okay in proper level so the tilting of the field results in the formation of large crop that makes its surface rough okay what happens now now when the farmer he is plugging the field you can find lot of big big crumbs are there okay of soil what has to be done it has to be broken down so that the level of the soil is equal okay these crumbs are broken down with the help of wooden crusher or wooden levelers now selection and sowing of see the second is selection and sowing of seed i told you just now the quality of the seed should be good so that the crop which is grown from it the crop which will come out from it is of good quality okay so before sowing a seed a farmer should make sure that seed is of good quality fine now come to the next one different methods the farmer will use how what are the different methods okay now sowing the seeds manually whether he will be putting the seeds in the soil manually means by hand or by using a seed drill or by transplantation these are the, the three different methods the uh, seed is put into the soil first is by hands that is sowing the uh, sowing the seeds manually then either by using a drill machine or by a transplantation okay now come to the next one children applying manures and fertilizers okay that is very important to increase the fertility of the soil in case the soil is not fertile the plants which will be grown from that soil will not be of good quality so we have to take care that the proper fertilization is there properly we have added the manure to the soil so that the quality of the soil is good okay there are two types of fertilizers natural and chemical fertilizers the natural fertilizers are obtained from plants and animal waste whereas chemical fertilizers are produced in factories when we are applying manures and fertilizers there are two different types one is man made and second is natural okay natural we get from plants and animal remains and man made is made in factories okay now this is a beautiful uh, diagram chart okay table has been drawn telling the difference between manure and fertilizers okay i'll explain to you the first is, is manure they are organic natural substances whereas fertilizers they are inorganic man made substances fine second are they are not nutrient specific manure they are not nutrient specific whereas fertilizers they are always nutrient specific okay they are not soluble in water and are required in bulk whereas fertilizers they are soluble in water and required in less quantity okay just go through this again table again and it would be very easy for you to understand okay now methods of maintaining soil fertility there are different methods by which the fertility of the soil can be maintained okay the first is crop rotation second is field shallow and third is multiple cropping okay in crop rotation what happens you are in first year if uh, example i am taking you have grown wheat okay now in the second year what you will grow 
you will go mustard okay third year you will grow something else so every year you're not repeating <coughs> the same plant same crop is not repeated so in that way the fertility of the soil is maintained okay because every crop needs different different uh, nutrients to grow okay now field shallow what is field shallow the field is left for some time okay a farmer of fellow field is a land that a farmer plots but does not cultivate for one or more seasons to allow the field to require regain its nutrients he does not grow but first year he has grown second year he has grown <coughs> but in the third year he will not grow anything he will leave it it like that only so that the fertility of the soil which has been lost it can be regained again okay <coughs> then the third one is multiple cropping or mixed cultivation what happens here in a field different types of crops are grown okay this patch is there here the farm is growing something else here something else here something else that is called mixed cultivation or multiple cropping fine children now irrigation as i told you when i was uh, telling the different uh, agriculture practice what is uh, irrigation <coughs> water is required by the seed sown in the soil water helps in proper growth of the plant as it is necessary for photosynthesis all plants differ in their water requirement for example paddy crops require more supply of water in comparison to wheat okay so the process of supplying water to the soil by artificial means is called irrigation children the farmer cannot depend upon rain because sometimes it may rain and sometimes it may not so he has to depend on some other means okay so when he is uh, arranging water for his field okay on his own by artificial means that is known as irrigation fine now there are different methods of uh, irrigation also with the farmer use as you can see on your screens also okay modern method i told you different methods now first is uh, we are going to talk about modern method of irrigation first is sprinkler irrigation and second is drip irrigation in sprinkler uh, irrigation what happens see in this type of irrigation water is pumped through nozzle under high pressure through the rotating nozzle water gets sprinkled on the crops at is as if it is raining this method is useful for uneven land field with sandy soil and water scarcity now come to drip irrigation in this type of irrigation the pipe or tube with very small holes deliver water drop wise directly near the base of each plant this system saves water loss due to evaporation okay so two different methods are there which we are using in, in modern times first is sprinkle irrigation and second is drip irrigation sprinkle means the water is uh, thrown like as it if it's raining but in drip irrigation a long uh, water pipe is there and small small holes are made in that pipe and through that pipe the water falls near the base of the plant only okay that way you are the loss uh, of water is not there but in sprinkler irrigation lot of wastage of water is there okay now come to the next one traditional method of irrigation traditional means when there was no proper technology what all ways the farmer was using okay so there were different ways first was moth or pulley system and second was chain system as you can see here also the farmer what is he doing he is taking out the water from the well and here a small drain is made and here from it the water is sent through the field and here in chain pump what happens in this method water is pumped from a stream pond or lake for irrigation purpose it consists of two wheels one at lower level and other at the higher level okay they are connected by a chain which passes over them small buckets are hung from over the chain fine children now next one is okay now the next one is dekli and rahat system 
the, these two systems are also the traditional method of irrigating the field. Okay. Now come to weeding. What is weeding actually? What are weeds? Weeds are unwanted plants that grow with the crops. They are not at all wanted but still they grow. Okay. Now what are the different methods? Either we take out the weeds manually but that takes a lot of time also children or by spraying we decide in the field okay the weeds which are not the plant which are not wanted which are not required they will die on their own okay so and different uh, they have mentioned the names of different uh, weed sites like math color dalpon 2po d 2,4-D, 5-D are some of the common used VD sites. Fine children. Now the next one. Come to the next one. Harvesting, thrashing and winnowing. Okay. Second last. This is the second last one. Fine children, can you all see on your screens? Harvesting, thrashing and winnowing. Now what happens? The, now the crop is ready in the field. It has to be cut down. Cut down means it has to be harvested. Okay. So what is harvesting? The cutting and the cutting and gathering of the crops after they are ripened is called harvesting. Okay. It is done either by either manually or by using a sickle or by using a machine called harvester. Okay. When the crop is cut, either you can cut it manually or by using some sort of machines. Okay. Then what is thrashing? After harvesting, the grains are separated from the plant. This is known as thrashing. Once the crop is cut, now the grains, it has to be removed from the plant. That is known as thrashing. Fine children? And for thrashing, either you can, what you do? You either, uh, if I talk about wheat, you take the wheat and you start beating it on the ground. The seeds will fall away from the plant. That is thrashing. It can be done manually or by a ma machine called thrasher. Now comes the winnowing. Winnowing helps in the separation of seed from shaft. The seeds are taken in a shallow basket. The grains are heavy. They fall straight. But whereas light shaft and are blown little farther away by the wind. Fine children, what happens in winnowing with the help of wind, the heavy particles fall down and with the help of the wind, the lighter or unwanted thing that is hay or shaft, it gets away from the, it gets separated away from the grain. Now the last one, now you, everything is ready, now you need to store it because you cannot use all the grains at one go. You cannot use it once, okay, it has to be stored for future use also. Now what happens, you store these food grains in proper big containers, okay, and that has to be moisture free because in case the moisture gets inside, what will happen, the food grains will get spoiled now, okay. So after harvesting, the food grains need to be stored safely before their consumption. The grains are first dried by exposing them to solar radiation. This reduces their moisture content. This prevents them from attacked by insect pests bacteria and fungi. These grain uh, silos are big and are tall cylindrical structures. Okay. It has to be stored properly in big uh, cylinders. Okay. Fine. Now we'll talk about nitrogen cycle. Can you all see on the screens also? Okay. Now what is nitrogen cycle? Children, there's lot of nitrogen in the atmosphere. Okay. And it cannot be used directly. The plants, the animals, they first break it down. Okay. According to their use. Okay. So, if I talk about nitrogen cycle. The cycle in which a series of events take place to convert atmospheric nitrogen into nitrogenous compound that can be used by living being is called nitrogen cycle. Fine children. Now, the various steps of nitrogen cycle are first is nitrogen fixation. Our atmosphere has 78% nitrogen gas. You all must be knowing the atmosphere, the how much percentage is there in the of nitrogen in the atmosphere? 78%. That cannot be used directly by us. The nitrogen present has to be broken down. Okay. It has to be converted into nitrogenous compound. Okay. So first step is of nitrogen fixation. So 
nitrogen is an essential component of all living beings this free nitrogen is first to be converted into nitrates the conversion of nitrogen into nitrates is called nitrogen fixation fine children now the second one is nitrogen assimilation fine nitrogen assimilation second is nitrogen assimilation once nitrogen is converted into nitrates they are absorbed by plants from the soil through the roots third is ammonification ammonification is the dead remains of plants and animals and the animal waste that contain pro proteins are converted into ammonium compounds by bacteria and fungi present in the soil and this process is called ammonification okay third is sorry fourth is nitrification now ammonium salts are converted to nitrates and then to nitrites which are again used by plant by nitrifying bacteria and this process is called nitrification fine the last one is dentrification now some of some other bacteria in the soil converts nitrates into nitrogen gas that goes back to the atmosphere so the complete cycle keeps on going and that way the balance is maintained in the nature also plants are growing dying and that way nitrogen is come used and again it is sent back into the atmosphere that way the nitrogen cycle is maintained in the nature okay now come to the next one, last topic food from plants children there are different types of food which we are getting from plants some animals like cow buffalo goat what are they providing us they are providing us milk there are certain animals like if i talk about bees what are we getting from them we are getting honey then silkworm they are giving us silk then eggs we are getting from hens and all so different animals are providing us different things and what is animal husbandry now we obtain many kinds of food items from animals rearing animals on a large scale for food and other needs is called animal husbandry when we are uh, uh, when we are rearing lot of animals okay on a large scale so that we can get their products for our use that is called animal husbandry i hope you have understood the chapter nicely just go through the chapter once again and uh, the more you will read the more perfect you would be Thank you. Have a nice day.